Linda, I'm sorry for saying a few inappropriate things. That's not like me. Huh? Now you got to apologize to me for telling her that's not like you. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Typical. You know, don't go there, Chandra. If you're going to up and go, then I'm going to go there. Oh, so you're going to trash talk about me behind my back to this stranger? And you mean to tell me Samantha, my neighborhood enemy, never said one nasty thing about me to you behind my back? No. N not, not really. Hmm. And when she not really said something, did you really or not really defend me? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, Linda, let me tell you all about the time Donnell tried to get hip and put on a pair of poop fit jeans. <laughs> Only there was one small problem. He had too much booty for the boot fit. <laughs> Finish those files for that corporate merger. Oh, way to go, D. Forget about me hooking you up. You starting to earn this job. I don't need to earn a thing but my paycheck. Okay, well, that's the case. Her coming to that paycheck playing the rent, player. <laughs> Yo, what happened? You kept having me spend money I shouldn't have spent. How'd I do that, D? <laughs> you kept pushing me to take the whole office out on my dime. Talking about that's how you get in good with the bosses, they'll thank me for it later. Yep, and afterwards, didn't they say thank you? I know I said thank you. I mean, that sirloin steak at that last restaurant was delicious. Oh, thank you so much, Playboy. You I think this is a right joke? There. This is my life you playing with, Mike? You know why it feels like everything I'm saying is a joke? Because you're a joke. You think we boys? I see now we ain't. It took you that long to see? You blind, but it's your brain that needs this vision check. I mean, you need some mental bifocals to help you decipher your friends from your enemies. So it's like that. It's been like that, punk. Once I moved to New York, me and you ain't had a word of contact. Even when I popped back in Detroit from time to time, too. Spread the wealth. You want to know why me and you ain't talk? Why? Because I don't like you. Never have. We were just boys because we grew up on the same block like family members that link up on the holidays but deep down can't stand each other's guts. Yeah, we were like that. So if that's the case, why did you, as you say, hook me up with my wife? Why'd you give me this job? I hooked you up with Chandra because things never worked out between me and her. And I gave you this job because well, it was the least I could do for your lady after I hit it and quit it back in the day. <clears throat> you swinging on, fool? Didn't you know I was the best slot boxer on the block? Oh, you forgot? Oh, well, look, let me show you. Now, you listen here. This is my last threat. You even cough the wrong way. I'll see to it that your job is taken away from you faster than you left your house last week when your wife made you mad. No, you know, this is my last threat. Stay away from my wife. Stay away from your what? You heard me. No, I really didn't. Can you speak up, please? I'm having trouble understanding. You want me to give you back the wind I knocked out of you? I'll sell it back to you for five dollars. Five dollars ain't nothing. Nothing but the cost of a nickel bag of weed. Ironically, something else that takes the wind from your lungs, but I digress. Darnell, are you okay? Oh, he's cool, baby. I mean, I just cracked a joke so funny it had him rolling over with laughter. Ain't that right, Darnell? <laughs> My jokes got hard-hitting punchlines. Uh, the name's Michael, and yours? Yeah. I'm here to speak with Darnell, so, yeah. A feisty girl that knows Darnell. You must be Samantha. I heard all about you. And you must be that guy to pretend to be Darnell's friend. I heard all about you, too. Oh, no nonsense, chick. You got yourself a winner, Darnell. I mean, I think you might want to reconsider your marriage vows and choose up on this firecracker you got right here. And I think you want to reconsider being here right now and choose up on getting out of Darnell's office. Unless you don't mind a lawyer like myself using that punchline of yours as an incriminating evidence in a court of law. Dang, oh, Samantha. <laughs> wow, you 
drink, got to tell me twice, you know, I'm out. All right? <laughs> we'll talk later, D, okay? Walk it off. And to you, Samantha, <laughs> the court of law doesn't necessarily apply to the court of corporate law. You see, corporate America runs the world. Remember that. Spoken like every other white collar criminal right before they go behind bars. And learns that the dude with the baddest gangs and the most cigarettes runs the white collar criminal world inside and out. Careful, Mike. They say those thugs in jail know how to make a backside hemorrhage on cue like a monthly period. Dang on, Samantha. You had to go there to make your point. See you. Darnell, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Don't, don't even worry about it. Um, so, uh, what uh, brings you to my office, Samantha? Well, I didn't want to go over to your, your house and get into a confrontation with your wife again. I hear that. So, uh, what's up? I'm just concerned about you. And coming here seeing your fake boy, Mike, I think my concerns are valid. Samantha, let's not even use the word boy when describing Mike unless we're talking about his lack of manhood. That works for me. So, this is your office. Nice. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure if I'll be here much longer. Hey, don't talk like that unless you're talking about getting a promotion or something. <laughs> I don't really think of promotions in the cards. You know, this fool Mike is really dropping some real threats against me and my relationship with my wife. And the only way I can handle him the way I need to handle him is to not be dependent on his job that he got me. What kind of threats? You're talking to a lawyer as well as a friend. You don't have to go anywhere. That's, that's nice that you have my back, Samantha, but I, I got this. I got to stand on my own two feet in this big city. Well, since we're talking about you uh, staying on your own two feet, let's talk about you staying on your own roof. Excuse me? Resolving your rent drama, D. Wow, Samantha, you're amazing. It's already signed. Just fill in the amount. Now tell me, who got your back? You do. Who do? You do. <laughs> and don't forget it. <laughs> hey, I'm not done holding you. There you go. Thanks, Samantha. You're a, you're a lifesaver. A lifesaver? Like the candy that slides down your tongue and sucks? <clears throat> uh, no, not like the candy. <laughs> oh, then you mean a lifesaver that keeps you afloat. Yep, that's the one. Keeps you afloat by holding you nice and tight like that? Yep, just like that. Well, I guess the only thing left to do is to jump in and get wet. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have knocked so I wouldn't have walked in on you two knocking the boots. You shouldn't have knocked and you shouldn't have stepped one foot in here, Linda. This office is a no-fly zone. Airheads like you ain't allowed. Uh, you're right, Donnell. Ain't nothing fly about this zone. But if you repeat what you just said about me to the CEO of GGV, you'll be flying your butt back to Detroit. <laughs> I know that's right. And in Detroit, I get some females to come to New York and fly your butt through a GGV window. I know that that's wrong. Don't let her bother you, Dee. She's just mad at the version she's trying to be is hanging in the office that she wished she had. Excuse me? Oh, you heard me. The real version of who you want to be is me. I'm smart, sexy with a real career. And you, honey, the only smarts you have is being a smart ass. It's clear that you're barely educated, and the only time a man finds you sexy is that last call for alcohol, right before the lights go up in the club, causing him to change his mind after he gets a good look at your tired face. <laughs> You're not the real version of me, honey. I'm the better version of you. A man dates you because you fit the description of what he feels he should like. A man dates me, <laughs> cause I'm what a man wants. <laughs> Don't get mad cause I'm a brick house, baby. And you're just one of those newer models that made of cheap plastic that can't hold up in the rain. Rain? 
<laughs> I'm sure you know all about how to please a man when it comes to make it rain. <laughs> what happened, Dee? I thought she was supposed to be the fun, seductive neighbor. You better be careful. She's starting to sound more uptight than your uptight wife. Uptight? Mm -hmm. Try nice and tight. But I'm sure you wouldn't know a thing about keeping it tight. Now, would you, Linda? You're right, Samantha. I don't know a thing about being a tight ass. But with the amount of men that's entered that region, I'm sure you don't. Don't know. I don't have time to play with your lifeless, lame duck friend. You and I have some personal business to discuss. And as Darnell's personal lawyer, you can discuss all personal matters with me. Oh, so you have lawyers in here now? Nope, I came on my own will. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. Because, <laughs> see, when I come, it's because of a man's will. But, hey, I guess... Lawyers get lonelier than administrative assistants. Honey, I am far from lonely. Because after you make that man come on his own will, he spends his real will with me. Willingly taking me to the movies, the park. You know, places that you hear people talk about, but no one ever takes you. Because <laughs> they're too ashamed of having you after he's come on his own no. will. Ding, 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 ding. That's the end of that round. Samantha, yes, thank you beyond belief for helping me out. Mm. I'll stop by later today to thank you again, away from all this drama. Mm. Yes, and maybe Chandra and I'll stop by too. Now hold on for me. Darnell, don't let small people have a big say in your life. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay. Ooh, she lucky she left. I was about to clock her quicker than Carl Lewis on cracks in the BCI and the LA riots. Woo! Still in the BCR? Mm -hmm. Nobody says they kind of stuff no more, darling. Update your jokes. Never mind all that. Like I said, you and I have some personal business to discuss. Now, what do you think you're doing? Giving you a chance to relieve all this pressure. It seems you have three women fighting over you, Donnell. What's a man to do? I know. Choose the one that can give him the most fun. <laughs> I choose my wife. Oh. So you admit that I'm fun and your wife's not. Hold on, I ain't say that now. But that's what I'm going to say when I see her later on today. I'm going to say, Chandra, Donnell said you're no fun. Look, you ain't saying a thing to my wife. You hear me, Linda? I don't know what it is we have for me or against me, but you need to leave me and my wife alone, OK? You know what I have against you, Donnell? What? Disgust. When I first met you, I didn't have a lot of respect for you, but I figured, hey, there must be a better side I don't know about. But after talking with your wife, I find out the side that I didn't respect was your better side. You had a good woman in your corner, and you go and cheat on her with some lame, round-the-way local chicks? It would have been even worse if them chicks were international. Mm. You know, American girls can't stand with their men, creepy women that don't speak a note in English. <laughs> That's because we know they can't nag you in a language you understand. Can't argue that, but that was me back in the day. I've been good. See, why am I having this conversation with you? Why are you even in my life? Because <laughs> I'm karma with a fat ass. You know, I don't care if you were that little Buddha with the big belly. Oh, is that what you're into, Donnell? Let me find out. Look. <laughs> None of that makes any difference to me, woman. You know, I ain't trying to hear what you're talking about, so get out of my life. Oh, you want me out of your life? Ain't that what I just said? <sighs> well, you better come to the office at midnight. Do you hear me? And you better be ready to be a man. If you do your job well, I'll stop harassing you. <laughs> I'll soon be out of your life. See, Donnell, this is the one time cheating on your wife can actually save your marriage. Eventually. 